as the old adage goes, if you play with anything long enough, you'll break it. And indeed, I've broken my fancy WoW Stick 1F Plus screwdriver. Now, I was under the possibly misguided impression that if you pushed down on this, then the end would lock and you could use it as a manual screwdriver. Now, uh, that was true up until the point where I tried to undo an Allen bolt that was really stuck. Now, the thing has no torque. I've clearly damaged the gearbox. What to do then? Well, obviously, we need to take it apart. Now, that appears to be quite a challenge. There's no obvious way to get this end out. Similarly, no obvious way here. They're not screws. These are look like the ends of plastic that have been melted over. Now, I've seen teardowns on YouTube. The way in appears to be to remove this switch actuator. <coughs> I've just managed to get my fingernail under there and pull that off. You can just see shining there the end of a retaining clip, which is partly circular and passes inside, locking the internals in place. However, there's not enough of it to be able to get a hold of. What to do? I think the first thing to do is to get my microscope and take a closer look. Here then we can more clearly see the little retaining clip. Clearly there's no way to get a hold of this. I pull on the end of the screwdriver, there is nothing moving that is really solid. My idea then is to, with the point of my scalpel, carefully get down between the plastic internals and the body there and just try and lever that out. Bearing in mind that this is curved, so you can't pull it straight out. Oh, that's gone somewhere. And there we can see it. Hopefully the same trick will work on the other side. Uh, number two. Hopefully now if we pull on the end we can get the internals out. I'm just going to switch back to my main camera now. Let's pull it out the rest of the way now. If we can, some resistance there. And there we go. The resistance was no doubt this connector that I had to pull apart. And we can see that the, the battery is still inside there. Don't worry about that later. Let's look at the interesting bit. May have to get back to my microscope. I can't see any obvious issues with the gears at the moment. How do we get this apart? That comes apart like that. We can pull the motor and gearbox out. I think this was the, or supposed to be, the locking arrangement. There I think are the two little LEDs, not three LEDs, little circuit board there. Ah, oh, right, so there's a ribbon cable that goes back to the main board. Get that out. Doesn't appear to be any easy way to disengage that. No, that, that appears to be soldered on to this connection here. Uh, not quite sure how we're going to do this then. A little bit of jiggling. 
All right, so now I managed to disengage that from the motor. The question then is what has actually broken? We have this arrangement here. Not entirely sure what that is supposed to do. Something seems to have locked back into place then when I was playing with it. Very odd. Let's see if we can take this apart. We have a little piece there. Ah, oh, this is interesting. There are these three little pins which should go into these gaps here. I think one of them was in fact loose. Okay, let's turn our attention to the motor for a moment. I think it's going to be microscope time again, guys. Oh, I can't see that. Under the microscope then, I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me get my scalpel. On this gear here, there's some damage to the teeth. Here there's actually a tooth broken off and I think the ones either side are, are damaged. So this is uh, shot, or at least beyond economic repair. I've looked online and these little motor gearboxes, I think they're designated N20. Once I've got the replacement, I'll leave a link down in the description. And that's all we can do for the moment um, to wait for that replacement motor and gearbox arrangement to arrive. Our new motor has arrived. Let's take a closer look at it. Certainly on the face of things it appears to be the same. Let's take a closer look. Looks pretty similar there. And indeed on the reverse. Clearly the shaft is a lot longer and you're going to need to cut that down. Let's take a quick look. That shaft is then 4.5 millimeters long. Now I have a doubt in my mind about the voltage. These motors appear to be available from 3 to 12 volts. The one that I ordered was 6 volts. Clearly this one will be 3 volts running off of the lithium cell there. Let's check to see if they ro rotate at the same speed. And clearly they don't. The original motor rotates much quicker. What I think I'll do then will be to remove the gearbox from this motor and put it on the original motor. And hopefully it will rotate at the correct speed then. All the gearing appears to be identical. One other challenge looking at it is that the edges of the gearbox stick out ever so slightly. On the original we can see that they've been rounded off. If we then look at it in the housing it doesn't look like it's protruding very much and it doesn't allow it to go into the casing so those corners need to come off as well. A little bit more work than anticipated. I will try and find a link to the correct 3 volt motor this will have to be pressed into service. With the modified gearbox attached to the original motor then, let's give it a quick check before reassembly. Now, I'm not sure if that is exactly the same RPM as before, but let's put it all back together and see if it works. In the UK there's a famous maintenance manual you can get for your vehicles in which it states Refitting is the reverse of the removal procedure. Really, Sherlock? No kidding. Actually, it went back together uh, a lot easier than I thought it was going to do. The last thing I'm going to do here is to replace the little locking tabs. One is already in there. Clearly, you will know when the slot is in the right position, as the slot in the housing will line up with the plastic. There, replace the switch actuator. Uh, 
and there we go. I'm, st I'm still not convinced that it's rotating at the correct speed, but I think it's going as fast as it ever did. In the product description it says 200 RPM. I don't think this one ever went at 200 RPM. And now we can get on with the real work of the day. Happy days.